Good morning all and welcome to Mobile Device Manager Plus training. Before I can start things off, I would like to know whether you are able to hear my voice and see the presentation. Please confirm the same by commenting on chat. Thank you folks for your confirmation. Now let me kick off. Mobile Device Manager Plus training program is a two week training program aimed at facilitating better understanding of all the features that MDM has on offer. We are in week two today. In the previous training session, we covered the various methods to enroll a device with MDM. Additionally, we also configured how to provision basic profiles such as exchange and Wi-Fi on the device. We hope the session was informative and useful. We were able to gauge the same from your responses. In case you missed the session, you can view the same in the link below. Now let me introduce myself. I'm Achudan, MDM product specialist, and I'm happy to be your trainer for today. This week, we'll be seeing app management and device security. So what is app management? It encompasses the entire life cycle of an app from installation to update and deletion as well as license management and what is device security it is the steps that are taken by an organization to secure the corporate data and the device in general this is the agenda for today's exciting training session firstly we'll have overview of mobile device manager plus for those who are uninitiated with how the product works. This training session incorporates problem solution approach whereby I have taken a few scenarios that I have com commonly encountered in support. The first such scenario will be installing and managing business apps. We'll see how the app management present in MDM eases the task of an IT administrator with respect to installing and managing business apps. The second scenario will be locking down devices to specific apps. POS as well as single purpose devices are finding a whole new level of usage in an organization. We'll see how MDM helps you achieve that. The last scenario that we'll be seeing is securing data and devices. Having granted access to corporate data and apps that work on this corporate data, it is only logical that you want to secure the same. We'll see how MDM provides solutions to achieve the same. This will be followed by a few scenarios and the solutions. We'll end this session with the questions that have been posed by the customers. In case you have got any queries during the session, please don't hesitate to post it on chat. We have got an expert panel waiting here, ready to answer your questions. Mobile Device Manager Plus can be used for managing mobile phones and tablets running on iOS, Android and Windows platforms. It is available as an add-on to Manage Engine Desktop Central, a program that can be used for managing desktops, servers and legacy systems. In this case, you will be using the same application to manage both your mobile phones as well as your computers. In case you want to manage only mobile devices, you can use Manage Engine Mobile Device Manager Plus. It is available both as an on-premises edition as well as in cloud. Now let us understand the Mobile Device Manager Plus architecture. This will provide you with an wholesome idea about how the product actually works. It consists of three important components, namely the server, the notification services, and the devices to be managed. As can be seen here, the server doesn't directly contact the devices. Instead, it contacts the notification services, which in turn wakes up the device. The device then directly interacts with the server. As you can see here, the notification services are platform specific with Apple push notification service or APNS for iOS, Google cloud messaging service or GCM for Android, and Windows notification service 
or WNS for Windows. As the devices to be managed are mobile and are always on the go, it is recommended that you add your internal IP address with an external IP address. For those who are worried about the data being accessed in an unauthorized manner, you can optionally configure a forwarding server. As the name suggests, forwarding server routes all the communications to the server first through itself, adding an additional layer of security. In addition to all of this, you can choose to configure Active Directory for authentication purpose. If you are working on MDM Cloud, you need not worry about any of these. As seen just now, there is some amount of communication involved in management. This communication is facilitated by ports. The device to MDM server communication happens in secure HTTP channel using port 9383. The MDM server to notification service is carried out through port 2195 for APNS and 443 for GCM and WNS. The device to notification services uses these ports. These ports are to be opened only if your server is behind a firewall. So how does MDM actually manage devices? In case of iOS devices and Windows, it uses the native client that is present on the phone to manage. However, in case of Android, you need to install the ME MDM app on the device to actually manage it. Now that we have known all the prerequisites and the basics, let us jump into our first scenario, which is installing and managing business apps. Assume I'm an IT administrator of an organization, Zilker, with a predominant mobile-only workforce. In such a scenario, it is the duty of an IT administrator to ensure that all the corporate devices are running the requisite apps and are also running the latest version. Thus, it becomes a tedious task for IT administrator to ensure that all the corporate apps are installed and are updated as well. Now, let us see how MDM eases this process for an IT administrator. This is how app management works in MDM. Firstly, you need to build an app repository. You can build an app repository by choosing those store apps that are approved by the organization as well as enterprise apps. Store apps here refers to those apps that are available for public download on the internet. Enterprise apps are those in-house apps specific to your organization. Once you have built an app repository, you can then distribute this to the devices. In case of store apps, this installation is carried out through the respective stores. In case of enterprise apps, the devices contact the MDM server to initiate installation. Now let us see how this is done on the MDM server. Now log into your MDM server and click on device management. And click on app repository from the left pane. As said before, app repository contains all those apps which you wish to distribute to the managed devices. Now I will be adding an iOS store app. So I click on add app and select app store app. Sorry. Click on add app and I select app store app. Now firstly, I'll be skipping this automation which we'll be seeing later. Now I'll be typing the application name which in this case is Zoho CRM. On typing the application name, the MDM server contacts the Apple App Store to fetch the results available. For this purpose, you need to enable and whitelist the Apple App Store on your external firewall. As you can see here, I have been searching for the app Zoho CRM. And now that the results have been fetched, I select the requisite app. On doing so, the bundle identifier as well as the Apple Store ID get automatically prefetched. If you're not based on the US, you can change your country by clicking on this change region link that is present at the far right. The second section here is app policies. It has got two options. The first is remove app on MDM profile removal. This ensures that this app gets automatically uninstalled on users revoking management. The second step restrict backup for app data ensures that the backup for this app's data is stored nowhere except on the device. 
this is ideally useful if your app is to going to work on confidential corporate data the third section is configurations you can set up the initial configuration on the app and ensure the app is ready to use on installation this can be done by adding a configurations xml file once you have added this configuration file this gets distributed along with the app and gets applied on installation ensuring the app can be used from the get go it is also to be noted that this is applicable only if provided prior permissions by the app developer now i click on save as you can see that the app has been added to the app repository now it is ready for distribution before i can distribute it to the groups i would first want to check whether it gets installed on a device first to do that click on groups and devices from the left pane and select the devices tab i'll be clicking on the device to which i want to distribute the app click on dixon ipad now select the apps and here click on distribute apps now i'll select the app which i want to distribute which in this case is zoho crm there are two options under distribution add to app catalog and install app automatically i'll be choosing add to app catalog this time additionally you can also choose to notify users by email to ensure that the user gets informed that an app is available for installation now click on select now this app has been distributed to the device now how do i see it from the mdm server that the installation has been initiated or whether it has been completed you can do so in this very same screen it can be done using the execution status and remarks in case the installation is yet to be initiated the execution status states yet to apply and the remarks also notifies that the user should install from app catalog this was the option we selected previously in case the installation has been succeeded you can see that the execution status and the remarks reflects the same now let us see what happens on the device firstly the user needs to open manage engine mdm app and click on app catalog here all the apps that has been distributed to this device is listed now click on the install button that is present against the app to initiate installation after obtaining the itunes credentials the installation gets initiated and you can see that the status has been changed to installing this status gets reflected in the server in near real time once the installation has been completed the apps move from the yet to install tab to the installed tab now this brings us an interesting question now what if i need to install this app to all the devices that are present in my organization as you saw in the installation method just now every device must be first provisioned with an itunes account to even initiate installation additionally though the app distribution has been automated there is still some amount of manual intervention that is required from the users end to complete the installation which brings us to the question as to whether mdm allows automating app installation the answer is a resounding yes mdm does allow you to automate app installation in case of ios devices you can automate app installation using vpp or volume purchase program vpp is a program that has been provisioned by apple for bulk purchase of business apps in case of android devices you can use play for work or pfw pfw is a program similar to vpp that has been provisioned by google for android devices now let us see each of these methods one by one firstly we'll be seeing apple volume purchase program so there are certain prerequisites before we start off the first is that you need to create an account with apple vpp the second is that the devices must be supervised in the previous training session we saw the various methods by which you can supervise ios devices supervision provides an administrator with additional control over the device this is how vpp is actually done in mdm firstly you integrate vpp 
with MDM server. Next, you purchase or approve apps on the VPP portal. These apps get automatically added to the MDM server. You then distribute these apps to the devices where they get installed silently. Now let us see how this is to be done. Firstly, log on to Apple VPP and select business. Click on your account name and select account summary from the drop down. And click on download token. This token contains all your account details as well as the apps that have been purchased using this account. This token is to be uploaded back on the MDM server. I'll be doing just that. Go back to your MDM server and click on App Repository and select iOS VPP distribution. This was the automation step that we were introduced initially. Now I'll be configuring that. Click on Configure now. We have completed the first step, second as well as the third. Now I'll be uploading the VPP token. Click on the Upload link and put on your S token. For app installation type, ensure without Apple ID is selected. This ensures that the user need not enter his Apple ID to initiate installation. Additionally, the S token that you have provided expires in an year and you need to renew it and upload it back. For notifications regarding S token expiry, you need to provide an email address. I've already provided that. Now I click on save. As you can see, the token has been added successfully and the previously purchased apps are being added here. Now, we'll see how to purchase an app using VPP. Go back to Apple VPP and in the search bar provided, give the application name, which again is Zoho CRM and then click on search. As you can see, there are the results that have been provided. Click on the app name. The first section is purchase details. We'll be providing it later. But before that, you need to ensure that the app is listed as device assignable. Device assignable is mandatory for the app to be installed without any user intervention silently on the device. Now provide the purchase details, which in this case is 100. 100 here refers to the number of devices to which you want to distribute this app to. In VPP, even if it's a free app, you need to provide the license quantity. Now click on review order and click on place order. Now that the order is complete, these apps get added to the MDM repository on a daily basis through syncing. If you want to add it manually right now, you can do it by manual sync. I'll be doing that now. Go back to MDM server and click on the apps tab and click on sync apps and select sync VPP apps. All the apps that have been purchased till now gets added to the app repository. As you can see, the app has been added here. So you can see app details as well as app distribution status and configurations are listed here. Now let us see how to distribute it to a group this time. Click on groups and devices from the left pane and select a department. In this case, I'll be using sales department. Now click on distribute apps and select the app. Now before you can complete this, ensure that you've selected install app automatically. This is mandatory for silent installation of apps. And now click on select. Now the app has been associated to the sales department. Now any device that's a part of this department will have Zoho CRM app installed silently on the device. Now let us see what happens on the device. As you can see, the user has not provided his Apple ID to initiate installation. It started without any user intervention and the installation gets completed without any user intervention as well. So what are the other benefits of VPP? The first one is that you can control app updates. This can be done for apps that are listed as device assignable. In such a case, the Apple App Store will not notify you of app updates that is present. So this will bring us another question. 
So how can I actually ensure that critical updates have been done on the app? You can choose to force critical updates using MDM server. So how it is done, I'll show you. Now go back to MDM server and I, I'll be choosing finance department to explain this one. And move to the apps tab. Under action, you can see a gear icon that is present. This ensures that there is an update for this app and clicking on this button, you will be shown options. You can choose to install this update automatically. This will silently update the app without any user intervention. This brings us to the end of VPP. We will now see Google Play for Work. Just like VPP, it has got certain prerequisites as well. The first is that you need to create an account with Google Play for Work. The second is that the devices must be running Android 5.0 or later versions. This is how Android for Work is done in MDM. Firstly, you integrate Play for Work with MDM server. Then you purchase or approve apps in Play for Work. This gets added automatically to the MDM server. Then you distribute this app to the device where it gets installed silently. Now let us see how this is to be done on the MDM server. So go back to the MDM server again and click on admin tab and select configure AFW. As you can see, I have already configured that and for your benefit, I'll be showing how to do it all over again. So on clicking on configure AFW, you will be shown this screen. Click on configure now. As you can see, you can configure with the steps that are mentioned here. Additionally, you can also configure using your Google account. Now on clicking on this button, you will be redirected to Google Play for Work. Now click on sign in and provide your account and click on get started. You can use any Google account for this purpose. On clicking get started, you need to provide your organization name and ensure that the EMM provider is listed as Manage Engine EMM. Now ensure that you have enabled the managed Google Play agreement and click on confirm. On doing this, your registration will be complete. Click on complete registration and you will be redirected back to the MDM server where after successful configuration, you will be shown this summary page. This summary page contains all important details such as the domain name, the domain admin account as well as the service account. Now let us see how to actually purchase an app in Play for Work. To do that, log into play.google.com slash work and in the search bar, provide your app name, which in this case is again Soho CRM. Click on search and select the app from the search results. And now click on approve. Approve essentially means that you are purchasing this app or essentially you're approving this app to be installed on the devices present in your organization. Here you will be shown the list of permissions that will be required by this app. Click on approve. On doing so, the purchase is completed. Similar to VPP, these apps get added to the MDM server on a daily basis through syncing. In case you want to add it immediately, you can do so by manual syncing. Let us see how that is done. Go back to your MDM server, click on device management, select app repository and similar to VPP, click on sync apps and select sync play store apps. As you can see, the apps that have been purchased till now are being synced here. Now that the apps have been synced, click on that app. Soho CRM. and click on the permissions tab. As you can see, all the permissions that are required by the apps are listed here. In addition to that, you can choose to modify these permissions. So what does this do? It ensures that you can pre-configure the permissions that are required by the app and ensure that the user cannot modify it. For example, I would want Zoho CRM app to access my phone as well as my location, but I wouldn't want it to access storage, microphone and contacts. Now that I've provided this permission, I click on save. 
this permission gets distributed along with the app. Now that I have done this, the step to distribute this is similar as we had seen for VPP. Now let us see what happens on the device. As you can see, there's just a notification stating that a work account has been added and immediately the installation gets initiated and the installation also gets completed without any user intervention as you can see here. On clicking on that app and viewing the app permissions, you can see that the permissions that were pre-configured on MDM server is shown here. You can also see that these permissions cannot be changed. This is the benefit of pre-configuring the app permissions. So what are the actual benefits other than silent installation of configuring VPP or play for work? The first and most important benefit is that you can choose to build your own app repository containing only the apps that have been approved by organizations. This can be both store apps as well as in-house apps. Additionally, you can also restrict users from installing any other apps from the store. This ensures that the apps that have not been permitted by the organization cannot be installed on the device, ensuring that the corporate data is safe and secure. Now, what if I also have in-house apps? Do I need to configure VPP or play for work? As you have seen, there's a lot of configuration in VPP as well as play for work. Though both VPP as well as play for work support silent enterprise installation, if your only objective is to install enterprise apps silently, you can use MDM server to achieve the same. I'll show you how that is done. Now go back again to the MDM server and click on app repository. Now click on add app. I'll be adding an Android enterprise app. So I select the same. The first step is to provide the source APK file. I have done that. Additionally, there are some prerequisites required. The first thing is to provide an app name, C delivery. Additionally, you'll have to provide category as well as supported devices. So now you might be curious as to what will happen if this enterprise app has an update. Now, unlike store apps, you cannot update these apps through store. So what is to be done? Simple, you need to upload the new source file here. On doing so, you can see that the app version has been changed from 1.0 to 2.0. Now click on save. The app has been added to the app repository and is now ready for distribution. You can ensure that you can distribute it to groups and devices and have it installed silently. Before you can actually install these enterprise apps, there are certain prerequisites. In case of iOS, the devices must be supervised. And in case of Android, the devices must be either Samsung or must be provisioned as device owner. Only in these conditions will silent enterprise app installation work. This brings us to the end of the first scenario. In case you have got any queries, please don't hesitate to post it on chat. The second case that we'll be seeing is locking devices to specific apps. As I've already said before, POS devices and single purpose devices have found exponential level of usage in an organization. So how does MDM help you with that? MDM lets you achieve this using kiosk. Kiosk lets you provision either a single app or multiple app to the devices. Additionally, you can also configure device settings and ensure that it cannot be changed by the user. Now assume my organization has got a logistics wing whereby a supervisor that is present within the office premises lists all the logistics bookings that have been made. The driver uses the same app and selects the booking that is relevant to his location and then navigates using Google Maps. Now let us see how this can be achieved using kiosk in MDM. I go back to the MDM server and click on profiles. Click on create profile. I'll be provisioning Q 
kiosk for Android devices. So I select Android profile. Provide a name for the profile. So in this case is kiosk for supervisors. And click on continue. All the policies that are applicable are listed on the left hand side. I'll be choosing kiosk from here. Since we are configuring kiosk for supervisors device, I'll choose single app for kiosk mode. And the allowed app in this case is going to be Z delivery. You can choose to configure settings as well. I have chosen to allow all these settings. Now, how will this change in case of the supervisors? It is pretty simple since the super since the driver will require multiple apps. I choose multiple app for kiosk mode. And the two apps that are going to be provisioned are Z delivery from where he can find the bookings and Google Maps for navigation. The advantage with kiosk is that it lets you provision system apps under kiosk as well. I click on save this saves this profile and then click on publish. Now that this profile has been added it is ready to be distributed to groups or devices to do that click on this link and select the group or the device I'll be associating it to a device now I click on the device name and click on associate profile I select this kiosk supervisor profile which I just created on clicking on select this profile gets associated to the device now let us see what happens on the device end this is how it works on the supervisor's device. As you can see, he can only traverse the app and cannot navigate outside this app. And how does it change for the driver? In case of the driver's device, he can choose to navigate only between Z delivery and Google Maps. Now a related question, what if I need to know all the locations that has been traversed by the driver over a period of time? You can probably know the current location by using geo tracking. But what if you want to know past locations? You can do that using location history. Location history, as the name suggests, lets you save locations that has been traversed over a period of time. Now let us see how to configure that on MDM server. I'll be going back to the MDM server and click on the admin tab and select geo tracking. The complete location tracking settings can be configured here. I have chosen to track devices at all times. And I've also chosen to apply geo tracking for all devices. As you can see, location history has not yet been enabled. On clicking enable, you're asked for another option which ensures when the location is to be saved. If you want the location to be saved on moving shorter distances, you can choose 100 meters. Based on your requirement, you can select either of the other two options as well. Now click on save changes. Now let us see how this can be viewed in the MDM server. Click on inventory and click on the device name and click on geo tracking. As you can see this device has not been located because location tracking is not available. I'll show you how this is done in another device choosing the next one click on geo tracking again I'm facing the same problem as you can see none of these have enabled geo tracking and the location has not been received from the device due to poor connection usually when the location is received Location is also saved if location settings has been enabled. Now another question based on the same issue. So what if there is a problem on the device that has been provisioned by kiosk and you the IT administrator need to fix it. The problem becomes much more serious when you realize that the device is being used by drivers who may not be well versed with technology. Additionally, they may be on road where troubleshooting these issues becomes a problem. The solution to this is using MDM's Android remote control. Now let us see how this is done on the MDM server. 
go back to the MDM server as the name suggests remote control lets you view the device screen over the air and lets you troubleshoot them remotely without disturbing the user now I'll show you how to do that click on the device name and click on the actions tab present on the left from the drop down select device and click on remote control and click on allow you will be directed to a new window MDM uses Zoho assist for backend this is provided free of cost along with MDM and you can use this to view your device screen as you can see it takes a little bit time to establish a proper gateway this ensures that the video quality is good and the video is streamed without any lag as you can see the device screen is now visible I click on MDM app as you can see the MDM app gets open click on device details and click on sync server this is just an example and you can choose to troubleshoot issues using Android remote control and once you are done click on close and terminate this session this brings us to the end of the second scenario in case you had any queries please don't hesitate to post it on chat the third case that we'll be seeing is securing corporate data corporate data that is present on corporate devices has high chances of being accessed in an unauthorized manner this can be through various methods like using the device features such as Bluetooth or through personal apps now the basic form of corporate data accessing in an unauthorized manner happens through data breach data breach can happen through two ways the first one is unauthorized data sharing this can happen as I said before if the data is shared through Bluetooth airdrop or Wi-Fi unauthorized data sharing also occurs if you are sharing and saving the data on cloud services such as Dropbox Drive and Box data breach also occurs through unauthorized data access this happens when personal apps try to access corporate apps now what is the solution for these kinds of data breach the solution to this is containerization containerization as the name suggests ensures that the workspace and the personal space remain isolated in case of Android this can be done by provisioning an Android device as profile owner profile owner ensures that a logical container is created and all the apps configurations and profiles that you push is applied only to this space this is denoted by a briefcase icon that is present next to the app in case of iOS devices Apple by default doesn't support containerization thus personal apps as well as corporate apps exist in the same space this leads to lot of problems I'll show you one such problem as you can see here this is a corporate mail with a corporate attachment when I click on this corporate attachment you can see that I can choose to share it through airdrop I can open it through personal apps as well as corporate apps I wouldn't want that I would want only corporate apps to access them so how can you achieve containerization in iOS for this purpose there is a workaround in MDM through which you can achieve containerization on iOS let us see how that is done now go back to MDM server click on device management and select profiles click on create profile and select iOS profile provide a meaningful name and click on continue these are the policies that can be applied to the device I'll be choosing restrictions from here the first is to restrict screen capture though you can restrict all means of sharing data the user can still still take screenshot of his device screen and share it to prevent that restrict screen capture now that this has been taken care of let us see what else is to be done as you already discussed airdrop is to be restricted as well to restrict the other means of data breach we'll see how that is to be done click on security and 
restrict sharing data from managed apps to unmanaged apps. It is recommended to restrict the reverse case as well. Now that this is done, click on network and roaming and restrict Bluetooth as well. This ensures that the user cannot change the Bluetooth status. Now click on advanced security and restrict USB connection as well. Now click on save and publish this profile. Now this profile when distributed to iOS devices lets you achieve containerization. Now let us see what happens when this profile gets applied. This is before policy you can see airdrop personal apps and corporate apps are getting to access after policy it is only the corporate apps that can access this attachment so you might have another question what if i don't want to you use third party apps to access my confidential corporate data these apps could possibly save your corporate data in the cloud which you wouldn't want the answer to this is using memdm's doc viewer Doc Viewer is available in your MEMDM app. Open the app and select the Documents tab. All the attachments that has been downloaded is saved and can be viewed only from here. These documents are not saved in any cloud service and is available only here, thus ensuring that there is no chance of data breach. Now that we have taken care of managed devices, what happens if the users try to access corporate emails through unmanaged devices. As you know, MDM can choose to manage only those devices that have been enrolled with MDM. But what happens in case the user is using multiple devices to access his corporate email? As you know, once the user knows his credentials, he may use it on any device. This device need not be managed by MDM and thus need not be secured by MDM's policies. Though MDM cannot manage those devices that are enrolled with MDM, it can choose to restrict access to Exchange and ensure that only managed devices get access to Exchange. This is how conditional ac Exchange access works. In case of unmanaged devices, the access is restricted. Once the devices get enrolled with MDM, they regain access to Exchange server. To set up configuration conditional sorry conditional exchange access in MDM, firstly you need to integrate exchange with MDM server. The next step is to enforce and conditional exchange access policy. This, when implemented, ensures that only devices enrolled with MDM get access to exchange. Thus, any device that is accessing exchange will be brought under management. Now let us configure a conditional exchange access policy on MDM server. Click on device management and select conditional exchange access from the left pane. You can use either exchange online or on premises. I'll be using exchange online. Provide your server credentials and click on next. Now MDM syncs with the exchange server whose details you have provided and fetches this data. As you can see, there are 11 devices that have not been enrolled with MDM. These devices need to be brought under management so that they can access Exchange. So how can you do that? You can do that by configuring a conditional Exchange access policy. Click on Configure Now. I can choose to restrict all devices that are not enrolled with MDM or specific devices that are not enrolled with MDM. I'll be restricting all devices. You can choose to allow some amount of time as grace period for the users to enroll their devices with MDM. During this grace period, the users can continue to access Exchange normally. However, they'll be prompted every 24 hours through email that they should enroll their device with MDM for continued access. Conditional Exchange access can be implemented only if self-enrollment is enabled. Once you apply policy, the devices that are not enrolled with MDM after the grace period has expired will be restricted access to MDM. Only after they enroll with MDM can they regain access. 
to regain access you need to provide the self enrollment URL using this URL the users will enroll their devices and continue to access exchange this brings us to the end of the third scenario in case you have got any queries please don't hesitate to post it on chat the final scenario that we'll be seeing is securing devices as we have seen we can secure data but what happens if the device itself gets misplaced as you know mobiles are handy and chances of it getting lost or misplaced is extremely high so how does mdm help you secure that you can do that using the security commands that have been provided by mdm i'll be demonstrating how to do that go back to your mdm server and click on inventory and select the device and click on actions firstly let us assume that the device has been misplaced so the first step that i'll be taking is to remotely lock the device to ensure that anyone who's having the device cannot access it so i click on remote lock so you can see the remote lock command is being executed once this command is executed the device will be locked the next step is to try and locate this device and click on locate device on doing so the location will be fetched as you know the geographical location that is fetched here need not be very accurate and is only approximate to ensure that you can identify the location if at all the device is within your vicinity you can let the device sound an alarm by clicking on remote alarm this raises an alarm on the device to end and you can ensure the exact location of the device now if you still have not got your device back it is safe to assume that the device has been lost so what happens the device is lost you need to enable lost mode click on enable lost mode now the first case is what if the device is with someone who wants to hand the device back over to its rightful owner for that you can choose to display a message as well as a contact number on providing this contact number the contact number along with the message is displayed in the lock screen there is also a call link that is provided on clicking on that link a call is placed to this contact number after which you can hand over the device now we'll first see how this is done on the device as you can see in the lock screen there is a heading stating that the device has been lost and contact number is also displayed and clicking on this button will place a call after which you can hand the device to its rightful owner the next step in lost mode we'll see that so what if the device is with someone who actually knows the passcode to the device in such a case remotely locking the device is going to be of no use because he can unlock the device with the passcode to remove this you can provide a new passcode i'll be providing a dummy passcode here this passcode will be sent to the user through email as well in case you want to audit this complaint of stolen device you can provide a ticket id as well as a message now click on locate now there are chances that the device might not have proper internet connectivity in that case you will not be able to establish lost mode once the device has got internet connectivity lost mode gets initiated on this device in case lost mode has been initiated and for two days you have not been able to recover your device you can choose to completely wipe the data that is present on the device as well this brings us to the end of security so how does mdm help in security management in case of data security you can achieve that using containerization in case of email security this is done using conditional exchange access and in case of device security you can use security commands or loss mode to achieve the same this brings us to the end of all these scenarios before i can have a look at those scenarios that we have already not covered in case you have got any queries the scenarios that we have covered 
please don't hesitate to post it on chat. Now the first scenario is, is there a way by which I can remove apps that were previously available on the devices? These apps need not be installed by MDM. Yes, you can do that. To do that, you'll have to blacklist them. Let us see how to blacklist these apps. Now click on the apps that are present in the inventory. Here you can see all the apps that are present in the app repository as well as the device. Now select any app and click on mark as blacklist. As you can see the following actions will be performed on the devices when this app is found or installed. The second scenario is my organization has provided full internet access and no restriction on any web resource for the employees. How can I restrict specific websites without affecting the usual internet activity? You can achieve this using a URL filtering profile. To do that, go back to MDM server and click on device management and select profiles. And click on create profile and select iOS and click on continue. Now click on web content filter. Here you can choose to either whitelist specific websites or blacklist a particular website. I'll be blacklisting YouTube. To do that, provide the YouTube URL, youtube.com and click on save. Before you click on save, you can additionally choose to restrict inappropriate content as well. I'll choose to restrict that and now click on save and click on publish. Now when this profile gets associated to devices, the devices cannot choose to access YouTube. The third scenario, as my workforce is extensively mobile only, we want to secure devices with certificates. Can this be done using MDM? Yes, you can choose to push certificates as well. To do that, the MDM server, click on profiles and click on create profile and select Android. From the list of policies available, click on certificate. Here you can choose to provision your certificate. In this case, I have chosen this. You will be shown the certificate details. Click on save and then click on publish. Pushing this profile to devices and groups will automatically provision the configured certificate to the devices. The first scenario my enterprise network bandwidth gets affected when several employees try to update their OS simultaneously. How can I prevent this in case of Android devices? To do that, go back to MDM server. You need to create an Android profile. Click on continue and select restrictions. Here you have got all the restrictions that can be applied to the device. Firstly, you need to select device functionality and choose to restrict OS upgrade. This ensures that OS upgrades in device is not possible. Ensure you save and publish this profile. Distributing this profile will ensure that the devices cannot upgrade their OS. The last scenario that we'll be seeing is, I want to ensure that all the network communication that happens on the device is to be done through a secure proxy. Can this be achieved? The answer is yes. You can choose to secure all the network communications that are happening on the corporate device using global HTTP proxy. As the name suggests, it ensures that all the configurations, all the communications are routed through a proxy. To do that, go back to MDM server and again you need to create a profile and click on continue and select global HTTP proxy. You can choose to configure proxy in an automatic way or manual. I'll be configuring an automatic proxy. Provide a server URL. Once you have done that, click on save and publish. Distribute this to devices and all network communications will happen through this proxy. This brings us to the end of the scenarios. Now, I'll be explaining and answering few questions that have been raised by customers in this session. The first question is, one of our employees has forgotten his device passcode and now ultimately cannot use his device. Can MDM help me with this? This is 
one of the most common cases where you set up a complicated password and ultimately end up forgetting that now MDM allows you to reset passcode to do that go back to MDM server click on inventory and uh, select a device select the actions tab and select the device and click on reset passcode you can choose to set up a new passcode if need be or in case you only want to remove the existing passcode click on clear passcode this will ensure that any password that has been set on the device is removed to authenticate that provide your admin credentials once you have done this can be achieved on the device where the passcode gets reset the second question is we are a logistics company and we provide devices to our driver for tracking purpose is there a way by which the users cannot disable location service and it is forever enabled this can be done on Android devices I'll show you how to do that click on device management as you already know by now you need to create a profile to achieve this click on the profiles tab and select Android profile click on continue and select the restrictions and here click on location services and for GPS select always on this ensures that the DPS is forever on additionally it is recommended that you restrict mock location as well click on save and publish this profile the third question is is it possible to prevent copying text from emails you can do that by restricting clipboard share let me show you how that is done Go back to MDM server again a profile click on continue and select restrictions here you have got all the restrictions that are provided here restrict clipboard in case you want to restrict only sharing click on restrict for clipboard share click on save and publish this profile the fourth question is I want to ensure that the apps that have been approved by the organization and distributed using MDM cannot be removed by the users is this possible yes you can choose to restrict our installation of apps let us see how this is done on MDM click on create profile click on iOS click on continue and select restrictions select the applications tab and restrict deleting of apps this ensures that the apps cannot be deleted from the device and click on save and publish the profile the last question for today's session I want to ensure that employee devices are connected only to those secure Wi-Fi networks that have been distributed by MDM can this be achieved yes you can choose to ensure that only those Wi-Fi networks that have been distributed by MDM are the only ones that the device can connect to now how this is done go back to MDM server and you need to create a profile again click on Android profile and click on continue select the restrictions and click on network and roaming now ensure that this option is selected as yes this is connect to Wi-Fi only if distributed via MDM even if the device has access to various other Wi-Fi networks only if those Wi-Fi that have been distributed through MDM are the only ones to which the device can connect to you need to save and publish this profile this brings us to the end of the questions if you like this presentation you can choose to rate us on a scale of 1 to 5 where 5 is the best if you like the presentation you can choose to spread a word on social media platform using this message the next training will be held on October 26th and November 2nd the same time thanks for joining and we hope to see you again for the next training session